Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Worship, January 17th. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I have a couple of announcements. Um, our annual meeting will be held on Sunday, January 24th at 1130 a.m. The meeting will be held on a Zoom conference call. The link to the call will be posted in our SCC News on Thursday, January 21st. If you have not returned your annual pledge card, please take some time to prayerfully consider your pledge and return it to the office. Pastor Donna will be holding a Zoom Bible study beginning Monday, January 25th at 7 p.m. There will be three books in the meeting series by InterVersity Press, Meeting God, Meeting Jesus, and Meeting the Holy Spirit. Everyone will have their own workbook and will meet for an hour each week. Please contact the office if you have any questions or would like to join the group. That is all the announcements I have for this morning. Let us all enter a prayerful time for worship. Allow joy and love to flow through you and out there. Transform our darkness to light from sleeping to wakefulness. And so the world awakes one cell at a time. One cell is happy awareness of union with the divine. Your time has come for wakefulness and help to create paradise in love and joy. Be a conscious participant. Live in the now, not tomorrow or yesterday, but in the only time that is real, eternity. Please join me in the prayer of invocation and the Lord's Prayer. Oh God, help us to come into a place of quiet so that we may hear your word. Encourage us to listen and spread love God, we want to be your humble workers. We want to do what is right and good. Hear us now as we pray the words you taught us, saying, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day as we forgive our debts and we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dear God, help us to do better. We are your humble servants. Help us to be instruments of peace, empathy, and love. We want your guidance. Amen. Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, 
the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Jesus, excuse me, Moses, in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe me because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than that leads. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God as ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The next reading is found in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim, so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So I went to lie down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you have called me. But he said, I did not call you, son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in the place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Our scripture reading today from Samuel is one of my favorites. In fact, the theme from both our readings today is clear. God is calling us. The story is of Samuel and his spiritual mentor, Eli. Samuel is a young man who lives in the temple to learn from Eli. The story takes place in the middle of the night while both Samuel and Eli are asleep. Samuel wakes up because he hears someone calling his name and thinks it's Eli. The story has Samuel awakened three times with a call. A common story technique used in many stories to make a point. As the readers, we know that it is God calling Samuel. But for the first several times, neither Samuel nor Eli know what is happening. Finally, Eli understands and says to Samuel, if it happens again, do not be confused. Simply say, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. I want to break down this story into several pieces 
because there are so many things happening in it that we can all relate to today. The first thing to note is the community's landscape at the time of Samuel and Eli. The Israelites had made it to the promised land, but things were far from perfect. The books in the Bible, Joshua and Judges, right before 1 Samuel, paint a picture of turmoil and tribes threatening war against each other. The Israel nation is not organized and it is a dark time. Our scripture begins with, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Does this sound familiar to you? Certainly we can relate during these endless months of isolation in our homes while riots flare across our country. Sometimes it may feel as though there is no end in sight to this deadly pandemic or that none of us can catch a break. I heard a report on the radio the other day titled, we are all tired of this. When we lay our heads down to rest at night, just as Samuel did, I'm sure the last thing any of us want is God waking us up in the middle of our sleep. Confused and alone, Samuel wakes up and seeks advice from Eli. At the beginning of this pandemic, I know our feelings as we adjusted to quarantine life felt a lot like how Samuel must have felt. Even now, as the virus continues to spread, keeping a daily routine, staying motivated, and keeping a sleep schedule are difficult tasks. But we can learn from Samuel. Instead of trying to go back to sleep, Samuel gets up to check with his mentor, seeking advice. We know we are tired. We know we are burnt out. We have a way to help ourselves. How many of us have wakened and not known where we are or who is talking to us? Fortunately for Samuel, he had someone to help him with his confusion. We too have help available. We can do what Samuel did. We can ask for help. We can talk to God or a spiritual mentor or we can talk to a caring friend, or we can do all three. In my daily life, I am thankful for the people in my isolation bubble that keep me grounded and empathize with me about how quarantine life is going. Of course, what is really troubling about this story is that it makes us all want to yell out to Samuel, it's God, God is the one talking to you. Pay attention, just play it cool and listen. It's easy for us in the audience to want this for Samuel. And it's easy to want this for any of our family members and friends. Why don't you just wake up and listen? It is easy for us to want this for others, but it is much harder to do for ourselves. I do give Samuel credit because he actually didn't know who was trying to talk to him. In my case, I do hear God, and I know it is God, and I still choose to procr procrastinate and say, I'll listen tomorrow. So the real question is, what do we do when we hear God? What is the appropriate response? My exhausted self's response is to put it off another day. This may be because of the pandemic burnt out world I live in, but it could also be simply because I'm lazy. But God's plan sometimes doesn't work on our schedule. And we, just like Samuel, need to respond when the call comes through these long days of COVID, isolation, God's voice comes through and says, wake up, I need you to get some things done for me. When God calls us, it's because, it's because God wants to help us and his call is also asking for our help. God's to-do list is not a list of chores 
that we can't handle. God's to-do list is healing, positive, and full of love. God gives us tasks of love, and it's never a list beyond what we can do. If I put off something God is calling me to do, it only makes my burnout worse. Sometimes pushing it aside seems easier, but God's response to procrastination is, no, stop waiting. Do something good in the world right now. It will make you and others feel better. <clears throat> Here is what Eugene Peterson says about the Samuel story. He says, it does not show us how we should live, but in fact, how we do live. Authenticating the reality of our daily experience as the stuff that God uses to work out God's purposes of salvation, of salvation in us and in the world. In Samuel, it is a sense of affirmation and freedom. We don't have to fit into prefabricated moral or mental or religious boxes before we are admitted into the company of God. We are taken seriously just as we are and given a place in God's story. We are taken seriously in God's story and God needs each of us in bringing the kingdom of God closer. What is on God's to-do list for you? What is the Holy Spirit whispering or yelling at you to get done? What is your passion and where does it lead you? Perhaps the to-do list is short and simple, or maybe it is a little more complicated. All you have to do to, is get on with it and say, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen. have any prayer requests, please send them to us on Facebook or email the office. <clears throat> Let us all now join in prayer. Dear God, be with us in this time of prayer. Forgive us when we do not listen and procrastinate. We want to be helpful in spreading love and doing your work. We care so deeply, but do not always show it or use the talents you gave us. Comfort us and guide us through this pandemic. Bring peace to our nation, 
so that we may hear one another and create lasting change. Heal the families that need healing. Guide the leaders that need guidance. Forgive the people that need forgiveness. We pray for Kaylee, Donna's niece, Joan Philbrick, Val England, Heidi, Maurice and Lucille Lachance, Phil Cote, Mike Mathias, Stella Scammon, and all of those suffering with cancer issues, and all of those caught in the increase of COVID cases. Oh God, hear all of our thoughts that we do not say aloud now. In your name, amen. Go now. May the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us, and may the way of God direct us.